like another hit towards A, but that Toxic Screen slowing things down for a bit. It's SM on the defensive. Looks to get a bit aggressive. Juna grabs one, will be able to heal up, comp herself off. But I think since that kill, things are going to slow down. Some crazy aggression from TSM on that A side, but as soon as they lose one, they pull back, and it's a good read because frogs have already made a rotation over towards the B side. They need to be careful though, because Ari is going to be trying to lock that down. Already has the toxin screen, trying to make sure that they can't actually push onto the side. But there's still a heavy presence from TSM towards A, and I think this is kind of a lurk to get behind the team and make something happen. And they're able to even the odds quite a bit as Athena tosses out a heal. Now that wall on pistol round, Ooh. it gets so much value and we're seeing it happen just here as Clefairy gets that spike plant. It's at the very least, frogs have netted themselves. Nice couple credits at the end of this round. Now, should they be able to pick it up? Obviously, they're going to be in a pretty good position as the flash out towards yellow gets the info. But Lin able to find another cap. Meanwhile, on the spike, gets it halfway, able to back away and... Two heals on this team. We'll see if Zoe can help out the teammate. Ellie going ham here. Ellie to close Ooh. it out. What a play here by the Frogs. And Ellie might get a, a whole handful of value here as that Boombot goes out. Unfortunately, that target taken down. So Emily off the board and Ellie not done yet. Picking up two here at the start. It was two at the finish in the last. And it is uh, the anti-eco for the Frogs. But... If, if you're an aggressive team, winning that piss round is the absolute best way to start. We're seeing some of that aggression now already. They had one person towards B side, and that's Ellie making some noise. Now they've made their way over to the A side. They're pushing straight into that. Marshall gets value, Tanner. Oh my goodness. Whether it's the ghost, whether it's the Marshall, Lynn just continues to pop the heads here of TSM. Now, Kath. I think what you're just hoping to hurt the economy at this point or take away somebody's bonus buy. You don't have a whole lot going in your favor Ooh. as Lynn closes it out with yet another headshot with that mark here. That small trade definitely hurts. It's one of the only times you're going to have basically even footing, right? You talked about the arsenal and that was Spectre versus Spectre. This time it's Lynn with the Vandal in hands versus the Sheriff. Marianne Arcus. Now the blaze from Kath in response, though, looking to turn this round upside down as Lynn continues to frag out. Goes good for two before falling. The blades fall on Kath as well, and it's all down to Emily, who unfortunately wasn't quite ready for that one. This is so... TSM taking good map control here. Frogs waiting oh. for the opportunity to push in, and now they just go super aggressive. But there's a big lurk coming around the back site. They're waiting for that jet to get into position so they can go for that uh, retake. And Showstopper going to be used, trying to clear things out one for one on the site. As Ellie, 27 HP, was healed up momentarily, but taken down almost immediately. As Frogs get cut down to their last three, but they're able to answer it back. And a very healthy TSM, a very healthy Kath on that flank that you noted, Sam. And it's coming in huge. 70 health to her name. Kath needs to go huge here. Also working against the clock. Spots Ooh. out Ellie. Finds the kill. The 3k on the round. And TSM finally on the board for TSM. So taking down that Vandal. Just proving to be so strong here in this matchup thus far. But answered right back there. Now Clefairy. No heal on the table. Obviously that resurrection was used. So they're able to get just about all the value you could hope for. But the flanks start to fall. The rest of the squad starts to fall. Now Lin has to do something huge with that operator that we noted. With 10 seconds, that's a pretty tall task. I wonder if she just tries to save it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, like, she realizes that there isn't too much that she can do. Oh, gets the shot onto Kat, though. That's like big. Misses on Ariana, though. Oh, does she die here? She does. That's a fan out, and they wait for the perfect opportunity to pounce. The patience is so much better now. Yeah, I mean, oh! not a whole lot of patience here as Emily just going to jump right into things with that showstopper. She was feeling froggy, so she decided to leap across this A site. Goes good for two kills. Oh, okay. I was going to say they're not done yet, but Clefairy answers back with a kill of her own. Now, unfortunately, you have three ultimates to worry about. One of those being that resurrection for TSM. So this could quite possibly be a 4v2 situation. But the frogs, they, they've got the spike and they have a whole lot of time to play with. What's interesting is Ari is still all the way over on the B site, and I'm not sure... 
I think this is just like a 900 IQ read from TSM. They probably realized that at some way. point, Frogs is going to pull back and try and move to the other side of the map. Now, the Bladestorm has come out for Frogs, so they're expecting somebody to be on that lurk. They know Cath was there previously. It might not necessarily be Cath this time around. And things just got a whole lot worse for Frogs because we got Zoe back in the server as the race comes through. Yeah, now, at the very least, you know... Left. The Sage and the Rez player over towards A. So it should be a 2v2 across the board as we get to see uh, a bit of the oh. Viper tech. Arianarchist has been working on his Lin goes right oh. over the top, says one way down low. I don't think so. With the oh. up in hand, Lin is able to grab another. This round looking a whole lot more winnable here for the Frogs as they start to battle back. Unfortunately, Cat on the flank once more goes good for one. Now looking to eliminate Lin. In a 1v2, he's got the knives out. Puts oh. them away, unfortunately runs out, and the defuse come through. The frogs almost pull that one out. That was so close, but I think that res was push in and kind of get ready for the next round. And that is a really weird Viper ult, considering it's an anti-eco. Yeah, you know, what it does kind of do is mm. almost forces the A push. Because TSM did stack four or three and one close up towards mid, it kind of says, hey, you guys have to go A, and that's where we're stacking this site. Now, unfortunately, they're able to grab a kill, but they take a lot of damage doing it. That is going to be healed up. Zemlin tosses out. Boombot there. Top shot going to miss again, and Lin continues to find frags, absolutely devouring this TSM squad here. Went up top to get the high ground and just continues to look for more. Now that wall goes up, and the spike surely to follow, and it puts TSM backs against the walls. They're working against the clock once more. We see again the potency of that sage wall here on Icebox. Very, very powerful agent. Oh my goodness, the shoulder! Elliot Twitches was not expecting to have a pixel peak like that. And the action is right back into it as Frog's trying to take an early lead here and maintain control of the spike. And they're just going back and forth. This time they actually force the blades out of Cap who gets cut down by the stinger. This gun has since been nerfed, but Clef Clefairy... Not showing us that it matters all that much. As Orianarchist comes over on the flank here and should have just enough time to get that spike defused. But that was an anti-eco at TSM. They'll get that spike down soon. TSM can afford to play this a little bit more patiently, play for that retake instead of trying to be too aggressive. Now they don't have the lurk this time around, which could be a little bit dangerous. They're going to need to go for a full frontal retake. And given where the spike is planted, it's in a really good position for frogs to hold onto it. They've got good post plant. They're also watching their backs, Lin, watching back of sight to make sure that the flank isn't coming through. This is a very good defensive setup here. Flash goes good for one here. Emily able to peek that one. Junifor now getting some information, but it doesn't matter. The rest of the team starting to back her up here. It's the spike on the ground. It's Zoe working against two. And unfortunately not able to get it done. It was four rounds in a row, but we're going to let that one slide. I'm sure she'll right her wrong because Emily goes forward once again, but up Ooh. towards Pipe. Junifor has the ultimate on the Empress on the line here, finding that kill and a quick resurrection to come on through. Puts Frogs back in the driver's seat, but Cat looking to cut them down as they push through mid, but it's traded. TSM, they just cannot find, the, they can't chain things together. Oh, some really good traces there. Manages to get the swing from Athena. You know, they turn around to shoot the, the traces and Athena gets the swing. Lin missing another upshot. This is, as you said, very, very uncharacteristic. Tries to for the third time, but Zoe just wins out that duel and now in the 3v1. This has been so scrappy and back and forth between these two teams. They both seem to have a fairly good understanding of what the other team is going to be doing, but now when it comes down to the 1v1, it's not about the team anymore, it's about you. And what are you going to do to try and clutch this? And, and how it doesn't get any better than this, Sam. These are the, the two support players that you noted before the broadcast started. This is what you were talking about on the desk. It's Dinos, it's Arianarchist, and we get to see him in a 1v1 with that spike planted. Oh. Bionic on a very, very far flank here. Gonna be able to cut down the Omen, unfortunately, send him back from whence he came. I don't know where Omen actually comes from, but uh, Shadow he's, uh, yeah, he's, he is returned to make a play out towards mid, but here come the smokes. 
So we're going to queue up another Guiding Light. Able to find the Flash. Now all the information is there as a Bucky up close and personal. But from behind, Ellie manages to get it done with the Boombot and open things up for the Frogs. They're looking for the lion's share of this half. Trying to go 7-5 to five as that Spike looks to get planted. Ari Anarchist able to deny that one on to Dinos. But Ellie just doesn't stop. You cannot cut her down as I say it. <laughs> it's a 3k before she falls. The caster curse comes through, but Ari Anarchist, you got a lot on your plate here. Viper's Pit in play. The smoke goes out. No snake bites to work with, so not able to cut down any of these uh -huh. areas. And what goes up must come down the frog's nets. To bring it just that little bit harder on the offense. Well, oh, I mean, they did just that. It was a, a hard push, a hard split over towards B. The only one holding it down was Dinos, but not long for this world as a couple of kills come on through TSM. I mean, they seem to have all the answers. As we see that Toxic Train going to get thrown up. That one blocking off Snowman. It only lasts for so long, as long as the Toxins are available. And our Anarchist only going to find two kills before being cut down by Clefairy, which I don't know if that's an ability that Clefairy can learn. Either way, <laughs> oh she's God. not done yet. A nice little 3k on the round, but down to the 1v2. And who better? If you want anybody in the 1v2, you want Ellie here. Working against the time, working against two members, able to spot out two, oh. find the grape of one. Now it's all down to Zoe. And I can't imagine there's a whole lot of utility left this deep into the round. Fake Diffuse comes through. It's low HP, just needs to find the body, but Zoe working with the clock so incredibly well. He's going to find the round win for TSM, not in kills, but in... They've got a lot of cover here, and they're going to go for strong post bomb positions because they do have the gun advantage in this round. And I think they heard everybody on the oh flank my. as the kills just start to come through. It is an anti-eco, so what do you expect? You've got the Spectre versus the Classics. Nice little... Uh, oh, not flawless, actually, so yeah. to try and use that to their advantage because they don't have any ultimates yet, and the Viper's Pit has already been dropped. Yeah, taken off the board now, and Ellie not giving up this site for free as that spike does get planted and the Seekers go out. They're not getting a whole lot done just yet because Ellie continues to frag. The rest of the frogs starting to come up behind. Now it's all up to Zoe. Use the alt early in this one, a paranoia from down. And then, you know, a couple of, like possibly, well, at least for Emily, her only kills. Ellie, you can't really say the same as Emily gets aggressive again, but immediately punished. Two kills to follow, but a resurrection makes us an even 4v4. Now, I was wondering, how do we see that Viper's Pit? But it is going to be that plant on site. Now, going to add some extra chaos to a, a very chaotic half already towards this A site. I mean, I mentioned that oh. I was expecting TSM to be aggressive. They have not disappointed. They have not. I thought, okay, I thought that was Ari Anarchist going down there. That would have been absolutely horrible, but thriving inside oh, the chaos my. is the Viper. Thriving inside the pit as it's down to the Jets in a 1v1 and Lin on low HP. It would just take one shot from the classic, oh. but make it the Vandal instead. TSM, not us up once more. That was fecting to win this one out. You want to get one or two kills where you can. Maybe even draw out an ultimate if you can, but... More than anything else, you want to get the round over with so that you can buy guns next round. And that's that's the the coin flip sometimes that you take. Like you said, an eco, you just you stack up and you hope they come this way. And now it's going up through two, unfortunately taken down. Oh my! The rest of the squad. Oh, okay. I would say looking to get cut down that Bucky, getting a lot of damage down on the Ari Anarchist, but only one kill. To the good thus far, low HP on the range. Try and slow down a bit, hit the brakes, and figure things out before they rush in. There isn't a lot of time left. And this play, similar to the pistol round, this time going to be completely shut down. They have the lineup for that poison cloud. Dash on through under tube. But the two members trying to push are going to be met. Now Seekers go out for some information. and Not necessarily corralled, but it does look like TSM want to just stick it here. Uh, and there's a crazy flank from way across the map from Ari Anarchist. <laughs> and this could go very well or very bad. Oh, it looks like she's going to come up against Delos again as well. If they actually do manage to cross paths. Oh, no, they're going to go the opposite direction. Ships in the night. It's unfortunate. Oh, no, actually. Second guess makes a double take out towards mid and is able to find that one. Now Clefairy and Ellie in a 2v2. Very winnable. 
that showstopper online. Here comes the flank once more. Nobody calls out the Viper. Nari Anarchist is just getting all of the value. Clefairy oh. does what she can, but unfortunately, the backstab from Kers, you see the, the play is just run it down right behind him and see what you can find. They are going to run right into Ellie, though. has been oh. hot for most of the game. Cuts down two, but they're answered back immediately. Now in the 2v2, but a resurrection available. We're finally going to see that Viper's pit popped here, Sam. And I mean, no better time, right? This is that... Yeah match point scenario but finally the race comes through and this is good because it now gives frogs the numbers advantage they are however going to need to battle through that viper's pit which is going to make things just that little bit more difficult for them but two still alive on tsm here there's a lot of firepower there making quite a bit of noise towards the back though so giving away wait did they just walk straight out of the pit they ditched it they used it just to buy some time and those snake bites I believe they last for 14 seconds. So the the Viper's Pit, the snake bites on top of it. There's just absolutely zero time for the frogs to be able to do anything. They are sticking the defuse. They do have the kill. And was it enough from Ari Anarchist? No, they oh. stay alive. And take them down. But I feel it may have been a little bit premature. About a second premature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if they waited literally one more second, that would have been it. But that was fantastic for frogs. And Emily just grabbed so much oh. space there. Blast packing her way on through. Right up to top two. Finds that kill. Onto one. Not able to find another. But very able to use that heal as well. Try and top herself off. Arianarchist doing what she does best. Hanging out on the flank. On the lurk. And Zoe making a lot of steps. But some way, somehow, Junifor does not hear it. Frogs down to their last three as that showstopper gets popped. Now on the retake. But they're just so far away. It's so hard to get that Ooh. value as Ellie finds a couple of kills. Now, making it down to a 2v2. Zoe, making her way up for mid. Clefairy able to find the kill, but again, they're working against the clock. They have to go right here, right now. It's the snake bites again, Ooh. buying the time. It's Ari Anarchist buying the time, and Clefairy just has to stick the spike at this point. There's just no, There's no time. time. Again, TSM played the clock beautifully. Buddy, they fake towards A, make some noise, move towards B, but frogs have already sussed it out. They know what's happening. What they don't realize, however, is that there is a killjoy on a mad flank coming through their spawn, waiting to pincer them in. And if they don't notice Athena back here, it's going to be dangerous. Oh my goodness. Flank versus uh, flank here. They're all knifing oh, down the barrier, and here it comes. Just how much value can Athena get? Is gonna take down two, looking for more. Still very healthy here. Is Dinos finally able to battle back, but running out of time. The last one standing in a 1v4. TSM, they've you can tell frogs are expecting another play out towards A based off of where they put those trap wires. Now, the push for free all the way through B Heaven is able to find a kill for Emily and. Not a free B-site just yet, but as I say that, Ari Anarchist gets on the board. Zoe gets on the board. Ellie's able to battle back for one, but it seems like Ellie against the world in some of these rounds in the past two maps. As that spike goes down, the last two, they're rotating, but this is just not a good spot. This is their first rifle, and it's going so poorly. I mean, we talk about mid control, and it's so important, not just because when you have control of mid, you're able to rotate to any point of the map, but when you have control of mid, you can deny rotations, and that's the situation mm. that frogs find them in right now. They're not able to actually get onto site, and when they do, that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, frogs on an eco round here, and we can see they're all rushing straight out of garage, trying to get this round over with. Actually manages to get a pick off, though. That's pretty big, all things considered. And we're seeing the power of the Bucky in that one <laughs> as it's a, a wide swing right click with the Bucky does find a kill and now the Stinger's not as it once was but we saw Clefairy pick up a couple on Icebox with it so we'll see how that proficiency lands. Unfortunately there's not a whole lot to be had over towards this B site. Is Emily probably going to take away this Vandal as soon as Junifor picks it. Okay no backing away so playing it safe looking to just hang on to that one because Emily was ready for the trade. Oh, here it comes. Oh, no. I, oh I, they're I, elephanting! I, no! <laughs> elephanting through mid, so um, Emily is able to actually hear that, gets the first pick, calls out the position, so everyone knows where Junifor is. Not that it matters, it's the 1v3 situation here. The spike is already down, and she's elephanting her way through vents. 
Oh, and they can spot her toes as she looks to push on through the oh. double joy position. So it is going to be the cypher. Trap wires over on this side as paint shells oh. go through. Emily doesn't need it. It's the phantom that gets the job done onto Ellie and up through vents, up through be heaven, really wherever you want to go. It seems for free as they're not expecting this. No, Zoe is some way, somehow finds that trade kill. And sure, one happened across the map, but TSM still in the driver's seat. And if you die towards A, just keep going B. And they do just that. And again, I can't stress this enough. Mid control, it's so important. Because again, TSM take control of that mid and they deny rotations from frogs. And anytime somebody tries to move towards this B site, they get cut down in their prime. And now it's down to last two players for frogs. We spoke about how this was really the momentum shifting round, the potential that frogs really needed to make something happen. And they just haven't. TSM still have four ultimates online. They're not going to need to use any of them because it's a 4v2. They've got solid post plants, solid angles covered here. There's elephants up in rafters. Ooh, but the kills almost go in the way of front. Unfortunately, doesn't find anything but pushes everybody away momentarily as Arianarchist starts to creep up on the site and might just get some extra info that the team needs as Dinos tries to hold it down. Last one in the West with the shoddy in hand, trying to go buck wild there on that A side. TSM, up one player, resurrection available. Now up two. Ooh, cut down. Just a 3v2. Those buckies starting to get some value. And Kath was thinking about it, that resurrection, but might just hold on for another round. And this is what I was talking to you about before the broadcast. We never actually had a chance to talk about it on the desk, but Kath flexing from that jet to the sage this time and giving somebody else an opportunity to be the the entry for the team and she's performing really really well here and now for frogs this is again another super unfortunate situation here where they just cannot get control of this map and i think you were talking about the composition something out here as it's both sentinels pushing on up the shoulder peak is just a bit too much for clefairy but lynn trades it back this one on to zoe that's a lot of utility now taken off the board in the neural theft there's the information on top inside the cage. Lin will play. And that actually somehow, some way it sparks a rotation for that spike to come over towards B. So it's still looking to be B hit for TSM as Emily plays inside the smoke. Maybe not long for this world as the guiding or the seekers rather come on through. Emily's able to take him down. The paint shell is not going to buy enough time or find enough damage to take somebody down just yet. There's that oh first kill goodness. coming on through. Emily stalwart on the defense. On this attacking side, B Heaven belongs oh to Emily. Arianarchist is able to get on the board for one, and Dinos has to go huge, but TSM in full control here. TSM was so good at restabilizing, because I'll be honest, at the start of that round, it was looking so good for. Vinico this time around, but getting the better half of that trade is Ellie with the Sheriff in hand, unfortunately traded right back, so TSM. Playing together right on each other's heels. Ooh. Double satchel charge. You can tell Emily's feeling it in this one. Picked up four kills in the last. The rest of the team starting to get it done in round number eight. Now a Spectre in hand. Enos peeks away. No, Ooh. able to find it. That spike down on the ground is Clefairy. Ferrari swings with the stinger and finds one. Now Emily having a pretty good game for herself. One kill away from that showstopper as well. Robot in hand. Has the utility. This is a, a very uh -oh. tall ask now that she's been stunned up and spotted out by the Trailblazer. Well, uh, asking you shall receive. I was hoping that frogs would find a way to start to stabilize a little bit better. And now they found themselves in a... Oh, they're not looking. Okay, no, she is. Woo. Uh, that was said Emily just kind of blasted away onto site without really thinking about anything. So without having that time, that ability to get onto site, and the ability to rotate, of course they were going to lose out on that round. And now, starting this round out, already one player down, as again, we're just seeing like crazy aggression. Insane aggression. Yeah. The showstopper was popped and Ari Anarchist just ran at it, even being <laughs> tagged by the cyber cam, the, the, the spy cam. So at TSM... Oh, Valorant is such a momentum-based game, and you can see just how much they gained from that last round. Now, granted, at the, all the way up through mid, which we, we kind of know that's happening. Frogs have just been giving that up. But Ari Anarchist, on the opposite side of the map, just pushed up to B for free by just smoking Ooh. off that turret. Now the kills are starting to come on through, and Lin may be thinking, 
Hey, I've got the, the lurker here. There's somewhere else on the site. Is quickly forced off A back towards screen now playing oh for the retake. Ari Anarchist on the flank, not able to find anything. So this is one of very few times we've seen TSM on the back foot, but they have so much available to them in Emily alone and the rolling thunder to try and stomp a push onto the site. Frogs are so grouped up at the moment. Up in heaven, no, and the rolling thunder's gonna come through and that's gonna shut them down. Oh man, I, I, I saw that in slow motion in my head. They were so grouped up. The rolling thunder rolls out and you're just like, oh no. <laughs> and it is going to be Lin to finally get that one down. Looking to get that ultimate online nice and early. As Ellie and this, I mean, we talked about how much aggression and how much space you need to take. Well, they've taken so much all the way back towards the spawn as Ellie goes Ooh. huge. But Emily again, a double kill with the utility. But Ferry, the last one standing, and unfortunately, the frogs have since fainted. They're sent back to the Pokey Center to heal on up for another round. But backs against only spots out one. It was Emily who shot that one out. But now they know that they're all queued up out towards mid as a couple of kills go back and forth. But the spike has fallen and since has been picked up. All four members from the frogs, they're going down oh. together. If they're going to go down at all as they try and hop away. Kath cuts down one. Zoe with the Bucky looks to find another. There's three remaining, but low HP. No heals on the board as that sky has since fallen. Now six feet under and their, their crowd. The spike has options, but for some reason, they they think they just need to have to keep hammered at home at mid. I mean, somebody's got her. Oh no, the spike goes down, his DNOS goes down, and the whole of frogs are on the other side. They need to cross the no man's land in order to pick up that spike to swing out, but it's not going to be good. And there it is. 